I'm going to take you on a little journey of us trying to fix this 99 Volkswagen Passat 1.8 liter turbo. We got a strange code on this thing. It was acting really goofy. We kind of got uh, derailed a little bit. Didn't do the research that I should have. Seemed to be telling us it was this ignition control module, although the code was for low fuel and some kind of, you know, misfires, random misfires. But one of the blogs had said that it was this ignition control module was the likely cause. So bang, we jumped to that, put it in, really didn't change anything. Then eventually we got a code for a mass airflow sensor. That's right in underneath this little booger here. If they were nice, they would have made this hole bigger and you could have changed it right through here. But eventually we'll show you how to take all this off and get to that mass airflow sensor. And that's what actually fixed the problem. nineteen ninety nine Volkswagen Passat 1.8 liter turbo had some weird multiple misfires no power some strange things happening at first thought it might be a throttle position sensor kinda of strange got better as the car warmed up almost to the point like it seemed normal at times but other times you would put it to the floor and it uh, would not go anywhere pulled some codes on it and we were getting a misfire on cylinder one, misfire on cylinder two, random multiple misfires and then the key code was a P1300 which was a vendor specific code for a Volkswagen Audi and uh, that led us to either we're like extremely low on gas you get low on gas you're gonna get multiple misfires but in this case looked up on the internet and it says it's the ignition control module which is right underneath this little plastic thing here. Pretty easy to change. So there's a little uh, fork over here. Comes up. A couple little clips on there. And there she blows. So basically just pull these two clips up. Slide the con uh, connectors off. Got a couple of bolts. We'll clean things up. Put a little of the uh, thermal grease on there. Plug everything back in and should be done. Okay, the trick here is not to pry these little wires up, but actually to push them down. Push them down with my thumb, and there she comes off. Got these two 7 millimeter bolts removed. I'm going to just clean that surface a little bit, apply some grease, screw her back on there. Push, push the connectors in and we should be done. Usually these ICMs would come with a little packet of grease, but in this case it didn't. So I had to buy this one special. Okay, I got the grease on there and then these things going to push down and push in. Same thing over here, push down, push in. Don't go crazy tightening these, but they do have a metal rivet so you can't really crack the plastic. But it doesn't take much, just barely screwdriver tight. And that should do it. Takes a little fine niggling. This side over here, it's pretty easy to crack. This side over here, they're supposed to pop in pretty easy, but take some fine nagling. OK, 
Okay, smoke test, and then we'll check the codes and reset them. I can hear that little hammering or knocking. That scares me a little bit. It's kind of what it was doing before. Maybe it has to relearn something. I don't know. That's not acting good. See, I think he's... Well, unfortunately, this is what it was doing before. When it's cold, you can hear it kind of knock in there when it's missing. And then at times you can you can floor the thing and it just you can just barely move along the street. Now for some reason as it warms up to normal temp, it seems to drive okay. But changing that ignition control module unfortunately doesn't seem to solve the problem. Now we recently did the timing belt, you know, hoping it's nothing to do with that, but a timing belt, if it was off a cog, it ain't never going to run right. Whether it's warm, cold, doesn't matter. So, hmm. Scratch the head time. We've seen this one before we started having trouble. Cylinder four now. Haven't seen four, it was one and two before. Three, two, all of them, and then random multiple. And then this is the one where we were pretty sure that that was the ignition control module. Now, I haven't cleared the code yet, so these, most of them are from before. Here we Could be a fuel filter, making it think it's low on gas. Yeah. Here's this 99 Passat 1.8 liter turbo. It's got this issue where we thought it was going to be this ignition control module, change that, didn't affect anything, run just the same. Now the thing when it starts, runs real rough, sometimes you can put your foot all the way to the floor and you just don't get any acceleration. I mean I at one time had thought maybe it was a throttle position sensor, but now I'm kind of leaning toward it might be a fuel pump. So this car unfortunately here on the fuel rail does not have a Schrader valve where I could connect my fuel pressure gauge. So we tried hooking it in to the return line. It does have a barbed fitting, so I had a, a connector to make that happen. We got zero PSI there. That could be normal as this return line is basically just pushing back to the tank. I wouldn't expect to find a lot of pressure. We started the car, or at least turned the key on. I had my ear up to the fuel tank with the cap off. I'm pretty sure I can hear the fuel pump start. This particular car it starts when you turn the key, runs for like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and shuts off. That's normal. I think the computer's doing that. But the question is, does it actually have any fuel pressure? As I mentioned, no Schrader valve in here. This we did take off. Uh, it seems to be some kind of a proprietary fitting in there. What I could do is I can cut this line and put my T fitting in there and check fuel pressure. Or I could go back and do some kind of analysis on the fuel pump itself and see if I can get it to act like it's not going to run. So I can cut that supply line, insert this fitting here, it's got the Schrader valve on it. Then when I'm done, put a little barbed fitting back in there and butt these two pieces of hoses back together. 
kind of like the option of inserting, well actually cutting this supply side hose, putting my fitting in there, and then when I'm done, fixing it back together with this barbed fitting. That's going to tell you right away whether you got pressure or not. Now when I cut that hose, it's the supply side going to the fuel manifold, so I want to cut it with something nice and sharp so I don't leave any bits and pieces of rubber hose that are going to flow in here and plug an injector. I've got the T fitting installed in there and my Schrader valve then connected to my gauge. So I'll have our assistant go ahead and just turn the key on. Okay, turn the key off. It's holding pressure. Question is, what is normal fuel pressure? I don't know. Go ahead and try and start the car. Try and start it again. Now that seems like plenty of pressure. I can hear the old fuel pump back there whining away. I've got the, uh, you know, I don't see a problem here with the fuel pump. Okay, timed out, shut off. Seem to time out and the fuel pump shut off and we're losing pressure fairly slowly. But still we had 50 PSI while it was trying to run. Got the gas cap flipped open there. Got the trunk open, pulled the floor mat out. And there you can see that little panel. That's where the fuel pump would be, although based on my 50 PSI that's pretty steady, I don't think that's our problem. No, don't start it. Turn the key off. Turn the key on. You can hear the fuel pump run in there. Turn the key off. So the fuel pump is running, does have 50 psi pressure while it's trying to run. Go ahead and try and start it one more time. So that's what it does, just runs for a few seconds. Once it starts, try and push the foot pedal and keep it running. Like the gas? Yeah. Okay, no code stored under the automatic transmission. I have not cleared these. Okay, so it hasn't thrown any new codes since we re erased those last ones. Okay, I did show, this shows up now as a pending code. Um, I would assume when I cleared all codes a while back that it would have erased the pendings as well. I'm not sure, but anyway, we'll go in and look this one up. Okay, the car doesn't want to run, so I can't check a lot of the live data, but anyway, throttle position I can sort of check. I'm starting to push on the foot feed a little bit, and the throttle position is going up, so I'm maybe a quarter of the way down. That seems reasonable. It's not uh, fluctuating and jumping all over the place, so, you know, I think I'm maybe half the way down now. Three quarters, now I'm pushing a little harder. Okay, now I'm floored. Got it floored. 77, you know, it's 100% as far as I'm concerned, but the main point is that we are getting a fluctuating reading. That's all the way off. You know, that's halfway or put my foot into it. That's, you know, trying to pass somebody right here. And that's floored. Try 
try and start it here, see if we can notice anything. Kind of starts and then wants to just fade away real quickly. Runs horrible. But here I'm not even going to touch the gas this time. It wants to start and run for a second and then it just dies. Sounds good for like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, wham. Alright, this thing's being a total, total trip. It's a mystery, man. Uh, it would barely run for the longest time. And the only things I really did was I undid this connector a couple times, which I believe is related to throttle position sensor. None of this that I'm telling you now, I think, solved anything, because it's still acting goofy. But anyway, it wouldn't run hardly at all. It would start, sound good, die. Start, sound good, die. Now all of a sudden it's idling great, and you can rev it. And for the most part, it'll rev up and hold for a while, and then all of a sudden it'll just want to fall on its face. But uh, I'm going through my different uh, various readings on my diagnostic tool. We did the fuel pressure. Fuel pressure was good. Had uh, at least 50 PSI while it was running. Sounds good right now. But I'll let you watch some of the readings and show you what it does. When I give it some gas and hold it there for a while, it'll rev up and then all of a sudden it just wants to fall on its face and die. Okay, I've got the engine running. One thing I noticed is that the uh, mass airflow, pounds per minute there, that never moves. No matter, now I'm going to rev it up a little bit. Obviously that should be going up. And see there, you know, it, it revs up. just wants to die really bad but I think that's a problem but you lay off of it it'll come back and it'll idle okay okay there's RPM and I'll give you a little sense here and see if I can you know step it up I hold it steady you know it's running good running steady running steady And it wants to do that. But I think that uh, mass airflow is a problem. Spark advance, you know, that changes a little bit. Outside air temperature, all that stuff looks good. Now I'm looking for a mass airflow sensor. You know, usually it's right here at the throttle body. I've got this uh, big intake air hose pulled off of there right now but usually it's somewhere right there but I don't see it when I look up in this hole here all I see is the throttle body I watched here and I saw the mass airflow number really never changed which it should be varying quite a bit between idle and revved up so I checked the codes again now I am getting a mass airflow fault. I have no explanation of why we didn't get this, you know, yesterday, today. You know, if this is the actual cause of the problem, it's been broke for a while, why wasn't it showing up? We kept getting those other codes, random multiple misfires. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, could it be a loose connection, something that we did with the the wire, we're, you know, we changed the ignition control module, which is kind of over in that area. But again, I'm really concerned as, you know, why didn't this show up yesterday, day before? Why wasn't this code in there? No explanation yet. Alright, we started this thing quite a few times, so I decided to go ahead and just put the battery charger on it, but you know, my first thought was that the uh, throttle is here, 
mass airflow would be over there. Not the case. Not with this car. It's over here on the other side of the engine. It's over here by the air filter. It's underneath here. We were messing around with this. We changed that today. Made really no difference. That's your ignition control module. But this here is the connector for the mass airflow sensor which is down inside of this box. So we'll mess around with that later. Currently we're thinking the issue with this is the mass airflow sensor which is located under here in the air box. The air filter is in here. The intake air comes in here goes into the air box through the filter then this car is kind of strange it comes out here goes down then there's a hard plastic tube that runs across the front of this bumper and it turns up in another big pipe I'll show you here in a second goes through a heat exchanger down there and then comes up through this big tube right up in here to the throttle body so there is a lot of pipe between here and over there and if you had any leaks in that if air was getting in here after the mass airflow sensor you could have a problem I was confused about that for a while but basically it's uh, the air flows through it and that's sealed and then air blows through it from a big duct that when we did the timing belt there was a big nine by nine square duct that kind of goes from down here and blows air through that heat exchanger but the air filtered air from over here is just passing through that heat exchanger so it's a little hard to get a perspective here but I'm under the car I'm over on the driver's side this is a piece of, I don't know if it's plastic or metal, duct that's coming from the air filter. Goes into this big hose down here and then turns into this thing, which is the bottom of that heat exchanger. It's going to go through that heat exchanger up to another big hose like this and up to the throttle body. So I'm at the front corner driver's side of the car looking straight down and there's that heat exchanger that the intake air is going through air is blowing through it and air is coming in the bottom out the top through that big hose and into the throttle body you need to make sure that nothing between here and that hose over here where it's starting to head over that there's no leaks if there were, that would be air slipping past the mass airflow sensor. This plug on top of the mass airflow sensor will pry out of there. It was a little harder than I thought, but I'm getting it. Once you get it pried up and off of there, it'll work its way up over that wire, give you enough room to see down there into that plug. It appears you can change this thing without going through all the work I've seen in some videos of removing this air box. You can replace just the element here and not the whole tube. You can see this connector from the top if you're able to you can't with your fingers the holes not big enough but you need to squeeze these clips push them in when you do that you can see that wire there sucks back in and will release it so basically I stuck a screwdriver in there pried this wire in kind of popped one side up stuck a screwdriver in here pushed the wire in popped this other side up this came up out of there
you can see the Torx screw on that side, Torx screw on that side. I'm kind of thinking some genius designed this hole just small enough that you couldn't get down in there, get those screws out, and pull this thing straight out this hole. So I think you're going to have to take this box off of there. Probably the safer thing to do is you'll probably drop one of them Torx down in there. I think the safest thing to do is pull this box off. Then you can check a few other things as well. The screen on that and a few other things. Push down on these clips. Pull them out. This is your ignition control module. One side has five pins, the other has four, so there's no way you can mess them up. Get those off. This tube here, uh, there is a little plastic piece that, that shoves right in there, so this tube will come out once I have two hands. This thing can come up, up and out of the way. And then, like I say, you're going to have to get this uh, intake air tube off of there. So we'll start the process of that. You're going to have to take off a couple of Phillips over here on the heat shield at least. Some people are showing taking the two off down on the bottom. Doesn't seem like that's necessary, but we'll see. So we've got those two little Phillips screws out there. That's holding on this intake air tube. So over here, this side should just lift up, and once that lifts up, then this whole thing will just pull up out of the way. There's a little sensor down here tied to this wiring loom. It would just help to get this out of the way if we undid this sensor, so you can just uh, push in, push in on my right there, wiggle and pull that sensor out. Got those two Phillips screws out of the heat shield. Now we're going to loosen this intake. Well, that's actually the uh, output air tube. We'll loosen that clamp and pull that off. Then there are four clips. You know, here's one in the front. There's one down inside there. There's another one back in the back. I don't know if you can see that one. I Anyway, it's exposed, and then of course this one over here is pretty easy to get to. So I think once we get those four clips off, we should be able to get this air box out of there without taking that heat shield completely off. So once you've got all those electrical connectors out of the way, I pulled that little hose off there, uh, undid the four clips, loosened this clamp, pulled this hose off the snorkel over here. Then this whole thing just lifted up with that heat shield still attached, so it didn't need to take these two bottom ones off. Now there's your mass airflow sensor right there. I'm cheap, so we might try and just clean that, put it back together, see if it works. Probably not, but at least now you can get in here, take those two bolts, two screws loose, then this tube will pop out and you can either replace this entire tube or that will allow you access to get those two torque screws there and pull that element out and replace it put it back together. Again, there's your ICM. They've done a little ingenious thing there where the heat sink is cooled by uh, intake air. You can see that mass airflow sensor down in there. You know, nothing's plugging the screen, no obvious problems there. There is a chance that you could just clean this thing and it might work. It could have also been a poor connection on the plug, could be a broken wire, and as I said earlier, it could be some kind of air sneaking into the system after it's being measured by this sensor. Uh, it does seem like we're railed high on the reading, so it's like it's getting maxed out. It could be a bad electronics here. Slight chance it could be some leak in some of that ductwork heading over. To clean this, there is a special cleaning fluid made just for mass airflow sensors. So I suppose it's worth taking the time to get that rather than trying some kind of 
brake fluid or anything else like that. So we've got some of this. We'll try it. I'm cheap. We'll put it back together, see if we made any progress. If not, we'll order one of these things because they do take time to order. They're not available at most local parts stores, so we've got three to four days to mess around anyway. This would be a great time to change your air filter and also to clean out this uh, box right here. I notice as you go down here in the intake air tube, there's there's almost like there's a there's a bag right there, some kind of a screen. So you might want to clean that off and then down the inside, there's quite a bit of debris. So I'm going to vacuum that up clean this out a little bit while I'm here. Air filter doesn't look too bad. I might bang it on the ground a little bit. We'll see. This tube is for the filtered air to go on over to the other side through that heat exchanger and then up into the throttle body. So while I'm blowing things out around here, I'm going to go ahead and plug this tube just with a paper towel. want to make sure in case any bonehead tries, tries to start the car that you don't uh, suck that in. But uh, anyway, that shouldn't happen. We're going to go ahead and clean this out. I have no idea what this little trap door is down in the bottom, but there is a little there's a little trap door down there. So maybe somebody can tell me what that thing does. We'll do just a little sucking of the debris down inside there, and then here's that screen I'm talking about and then we'll just uh, clean out this box in general. Got everything cleaned up. Put the air box back down in there. Got these two Phillips screws on the heat shield tight. Got the four clips popped in. Got the sensors all hooked back up. Mass air flow. Uh, got the main tube, if I didn't already say that, hooked back up. Intake air thing is back in. Uh, this little tube right here. Got that plugged back in. This little thing kind of back on its peg. And we're ready to give it a try after just squirting the mass airflow sensor with some cleaner. Just a, just a wild try. We'll see how it goes. If not, we'll uh, order a new one. big surprise acting exactly the way it did before I had my code scanner hooked up there looking at mass airflow it was just staying absolute rock steady I think yesterday it was like at you know 13.12 just very a tenth today it was like at 11.1 11.2 never change I've whittled the uh, available choices down to some that I thought were the most important. So I'm going to go ahead now and start the car. And we'll monitor some of these. Yeah, it just really thr 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 died, so. Okay, we got her to start and run there. But as you can see, the uh, manifold or the mass airflow is stuck right around 11. Now we're idling. Still at 11. Now I'll try and take it up to like 3,000 RPM hold it, it'll stay for a while, then it'll start sputtering and about die, so...
title's good. These are some manufacturer specific codes. I had seen this one before. This one here I don't remember seeing before. Throttle, pedal, position sensor, switch A, circuit high. Hmm. Throttle actuation, potentiometer signal too high. At one point I had had this wiring connector loose, kind of checking for bad connections, anything like that. It was hanging down. I think I might have started the car with that off. That's probably why we're getting those two codes related to the throttle positioner or accelerator pedal position sensor. So I'm going to clear those, try and start the car again, see what comes back. As I'm sitting here in the quiet car, uh, I could hear the fuel pump run for a little bit and shut off, so I'm pretty sure that that's not the issue. We've shown the pressure's good, 50 PSI on that. I'm going to go ahead and erase the codes. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start the car, see what comes back. Right now I've got no check engine light. It'll hold steady and then all of a sudden, I don't move my foot at all, and it'll want to fall on its face. There we go. And I got to kind of work the foot speed to keep it from dying there. But if I ease off, idles like a champ. So I'm sitting here, engine running, just idling nice and smooth, everything seems cool. Pretty steady right there. Still no check engine light. Got a reduced subset here. Spark advance, you know that changes. Throttle position obviously is as I put my foot into it. I thought I had my foot in a little deeper than that, but let's see here. I'll go I'll go deep and hold it here. But you can see that mass airflow not moving at all. Significantly anyway. I do have a check engine light now. Pending code, mass airflow. You'd think it would know more than that. I guess the good news of that experiment was that uh, most likely those accelerator pedal or throttle position type things were related to me having this connector unplugged at one point. So the only code we're getting now is mass airflow, which is that bad boy right there. It is kind of a cool winter day, but I just, I'm a little nervous, you know, coming off the exhaust pipe. We've got, you know, a fair amount of, fair amount of water here. Probably normal, but just a concern. Does not smell at all like antifreeze. Antifreeze level's not going down, but just always real nervous with the engine knocking and misfiring. You know, we don't want to blow a head gasket or something like that. Antifreeze level in the surge tank is held extremely steady, so I don't think we have a problem, but it's just me getting nervous. With a turbo, they're looking for performance, so with a turbo you're going to supercharge or pressurize the intake air. So you're going to suck the air in through here, take it through the filter, past the mass airflow sensor, 
You're going to take it down here to a turbocharger, increase the pressure, and then send it over here through the air-to-air -air heat exchanger, and then on up into the throttle body and into the four cylinders. The reason why they want to run it through this air-to-air -air heat exchanger is it helps cool it down. Anytime you pressurize air, you add heat. And hot air is not as dense, so if you can cool it down, the air is a little denser, so you can put more air into the cylinders if it's cool. I've got this piece removed from the vehicle. We're going to try and just replace this element. The only thing I'm a little nervous about now is this is a, a Bosch. Probably the uh, you know, original manufacturer, maybe even the original piece. Hopefully the Wagner screws right in there. I'm hoping it does. If you had bought this entire new piece here, there is a, a gasket right there. There's a gasket right here that you'd have to transfer over to the new piece. But in our case, we're just going to try and undo these two torque screws, put the new element down in there, and uh, put her back together and hope that fixes it. Here's the sensor itself. I don't see an obvious directional arrow on here for, you know, the flow. It is a little bit different in here. On the closest side, it's a green circuit board. On the far side, it's like a film down in there. Here's the other side. This is that film in there. Basically what they're doing is they're running electricity through a wire or a film, and depending on how much current it takes to keep that wire or film at a certain temperature, they can guess on how much air is blowing by. He just drove off in the uh, Passat, working good, that mass airflow sensor uh, solved the problem. Early on, I think we got a couple of codes that had to do with, uh, there were manufacturer specific codes, I thought it was a 1326 and a 1328. I did look those up today and one of the causes could be mass airflow sensor. I think we got those a while back and we thought, oh those are some manufacturer specific fuel trim, not paying any attention to that. And then we got off on that code that seemed to be the ignition control module. That turned out to apparently not be the problem. Uh, I'm pretty sure that did not solve anything. And then uh, this mass airflow sensor did solve it. One thing I wanted to mention is that I had read in some of the comments when I, where I bought the sensor the people say, yeah, it worked great, you know, it took about 10 minutes for the computer to relearn, and then it worked great. We kind of had that issue as well. When we first started it up, it would rev up and run great. Uh, but when you try and bring it back to idle, it would flutter and eventually die. So we had to go through a few cycles of that. And then we just let it sit there and idle for about five minutes, shut it off, started it, kind of went through that again. Went through that maybe a couple of times, and then it got to be where you could start it, and it would stay running. Then we took it out for a test drive, and now everything seems to be great. So apparently the computer has to kind of relearn once you put in a new mass airflow sensor. So you're going to have to maybe go through a little bit of 10, 15 minutes of starting, let it run and idle for a while, that kind of stuff. So you might want to check into that a little bit more before you completely get into one of these jobs. Not that it makes 10 cents worth of difference, but the new mass airflow sensor came with some new screws. They're torques, but they're the safety torques that have the 
little pin sticking up in the middle so the torque screw has a hole in the end. I'm like, why would I want to use those? I'm just going to use the regular Torx that came out of the original one. I like to show my mistakes and uh, lessons learned. When I was trying to get this thing out through that hole in the kind of the air cleaner cover, I stick a screwdriver down there and prying around, I must have broken out a corner of that connector. Then that little piece got stuck in the plug. When I pulled this one out, I noticed this was broke, but I just assumed that little piece had fallen out somewhere. It was actually in the plug, so then when I tried to plug the new one in, it wouldn't plug in right. So I had to figure that one out. That hole you're trying to work in is so small, you know, you can't reach your fingers down and push in on those two wires and pull the plug at the same time. So you, you kind of have to push in one wire and pry up a corner, push in the wire, pry up a corner, but just be a little careful. You don't want to break this edge out, especially on your new one. But you shouldn't be trying to get the plug off your new one, just pushing it on. This is the walker part that we got. The original was a Bosch. You know, that'd probably be my recommendation, but they're pricey. Walker, I think, is a pretty good brand. And it was a lot cheaper. And we got just the sensor. So we got just that piece right there instead of the entire uh, tube assembly. And it comes with uh, certification here, test certifications. So I think it's a pretty good brand. So for whatever we paid, good price. So this solved it. I noticed right off the bat that the old sensor was reading like 11.4, barely fluctuating in the first decimal place, maybe 13 sometimes, but more around 11. Put the new one in, now it fluctuated anywhere from 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Step on it a little bit, you might get 1.5. Step a little more, you get 3. I kept it plugged in. We went out on the highway a little bit, stepped on it. I think the highest we got was, you know, I saw it go 9.7, then maybe 11. But yeah, this thing should be going anywhere from 12 down to, you know, 0.25, that kind of stuff. So if it's frozen at one particular value, it's not working. Now it's kind of scaring me a little bit. I came back to the back of the car, right here under where the uh, tailpipe is. I'm seeing a lot of moisture. It is uh, cold outside. Not unusual for the cars to put out some moisture, especially starting up and all that, but uh, a little concerning. You know, head gasket could be a pot potential issue. But you can see that, you know, the ground is wet from just uh, condensation. We're idling here, um, you know, there's nothing dripping out of here. I can see a little bit of steam rolling away in the, in the porch lights there, but uh, you know, doesn't seem to be anything crazy.